Hello everyone, welcome back. In today's video, we're going to talk about the predator-prey model. This is Endless Engineering, I'm Gus, so let's dive right in. In the last two videos on modeling, we talked about the modeling of a DC motor and the modeling of a suspension system. Both are really important systems and the elements that we used in them are also really important for a lot of generalized classes of systems. However, these were mechanical and electrical systems. In this video, we're going to talk about the predator-prey model, which is a biological system. And the reason for that is I want to show you that modeling is really domain specific. So you need to know your domain and you need to use all these tools that we use here, like differential equations, calculus, all the assumptions, linear algebra, so that you can make your own system model if you want to design a controller that affects it. So let's talk about the predator-prey model. In this case, let's say we have a predator population, say of wolves, and we have a sheep prey population, and these two populations live in the same area, and they're going to interact with each other. And we want to predict the population rate of change over time, right? That's typically what a dynamical system is, and these are the equations that we need to talk about how the system changes over time. To do that, we need to make a set of assumptions. Let's start out with the fact that the prey will have ample food, right? And the idea here is that um, the, we are going to study these populations over a period of time that's relatively small. And that could mean years or could mean months. But in this case, when we say that the prey will have ample food, it won't run out of it, it's not an unrealistic assumption. Again, the time scale might change and it might become one, but in this case, no. The second assumption is that the predator only eats the prey. Uh, and again, this typically applies to populations where we know exactly that there is a predator that likes this prey, right? Um, it doesn't need anything else. The third assumption is that both populations' rate of change over time is proportional to their size. So the rate of change of the population size is um, proportional to its size. Population uh, is proportional to its size. Right? Okay. The fourth assumption is that the predator doesn't get tired of eating the prey. Right? It keeps eating it. It's, it's its favorite food. Right? So, predator always eats prey. Um, and the fifth assumption, just to cover all our bases, is that the environment does not favor any population. Population. Right? And by that I mean like it never gets like really cold for the prey to die off for no reason or anything like that. Again, we are studying the system based on a limited scope in this case, but these equations can help us define, oh, how does this system interact with each other? So given these assumptions, let's say that X is our prey and Y is our predator. Right? So let's start out. We want to talk about the rate of change of the population size. So X represents the population size of the prey. Say there's a thousand of them. Y represents the population size of our predator. So we said this is sheep and wolves. It could be anything else. It doesn't matter. Um, so and so let's say that uh, DX DT is going to change over time. So let's start out with, with our assumptions. right? It has ample food. So we don't need to, for the prey, have any term for food. It also, its rate of change is proportional to its size. So that's, we can get that, right? Alpha x. So alpha is a constant, the proportional constant. x is the size itself. So the rate of change is proportional to its size. So check on this one, right? Now the predator, not talking about that. Now the environment doesn't change in any way, right? Okay. So does this mean this is the only term? Not really, right? Because the predator and the prey meet. And that's when the predator eats the prey. So the amount of decay, right, minus sign, and the size of this population is some constant beta multiplied by its size and the predator's size. 
Now this term is the coupling term that says, hey, if I have a certain size of population of predator and I have a certain size of population of prey, there is a probability that they will meet. And we're making the assumption here that that probability is kind of proportional to their sizes, which makes sense. So over a given area, if you have 100 um, preys and 200 um, uh, predators, or vice versa, the, their sizes dictate how much they meet, and that will dictate how much there's a decay in the uh, population of the prey. Now for the predator, it's somewhat similar. We have we need a term that's proportional to its size. Now let's say we have a term um, delta y, right? The rate of change of the population of the predator depends on its um, size. So check on number three. Uh, so we check this one in the first equation. Now the predator only eats the prey. So check on that. We're not going to add another term related. We still haven't added the, the, the first term, but we're not going to add any other term other than that. And the predator uh, eats the prey and doesn't um, get tired of it. Um, and there's no environment, right? These are the things that we need. So we ch this comes from uh, assumption number three. Now we know that it will grow in size based on how much it meets the prey the same way. So you can see that this term and this term are the same. We're not using the same factor because the predator will meet the prey and it will eat it. That's why the prey's size decreases, the negative sign. But the predator won't grow at the rate that it eats the prey. So it's not like the wolf eats one sheep and then it gets another wolf, right? That's not how it works. So the gamma here is different than beta. There are different coefficients, different constants that will dictate all this, all this uh, change. Okay, great. So now we have equations that define how the predator-prey system interact with each other. Now these constants, alpha, beta, delta, and gamma, you can get them from an actual study, or you can go, like, if you actually are studying a system that has these values, it's like when we did the previous videos on, say, for example, suspension system. We had the mass, we had the damping, all those coefficients, we could have gotten them from experiments. It's the same thing here. So there you have it. These are the equations that describe the predator-prey model for this system where we have two populations and they're interacting with each other. These equations, I didn't actually come up with them. They're called the uh, Lotka-Volterra equations. And they're attributed to two uh, physicists, uh, sorry, two mathematicians. L Alfred Lotka was an American mathematician who worked on uh, chemical reactions initially. That's where his first model related to this came. And then he extended it to biological systems. And I think he put it in his book in 1925. Um, the work of Volterra, actually, Vito Volterra, who is a Italian mathematician, uh, he worked on studying the population of fish. There's like predatory, predatory fish, and it was eating all the fish in World War, after World War I, and there was like a change in the population, and he was studying that interaction. And both of these mathematicians came to the same or similar models, which are now referred to as the Lotka Volterra equations. If you like this video, make sure you hit the thumbs up button. Also, Think about subscribing to Endless Engineering and hitting the notification bell. That way, YouTube gives you a notification every time we roll out a new video. Thanks for watching.